Now we are going to uh, uh, talk about the ethics duties of the advocate, correct? How it is related of the individual subjective morality. Uh, let me give you an example, a real example, then you'll understand why, why, what is the purpose of this, this, you know, hypothesis. You are sitting, all of you now. What do you see now? Simple question. No, no, not me, you are seeing the wall, you are seeing this microphone, you are seeing many things, correct? <coughs> all of you? So if I give half of you a microscope, so those half would be seeing the millions of other things. Other half will not be able to see that. Let me ask you a question then. What is truth? The persons who are seeing with the microscope the millions of other things, is it the truth? Or the truth is only this person, this podium, this camera, this etc. etc. Truth is also subjective to perspective. Yes. So, let me put it the same thing in a different sentence. The truth is dependent on the tool that you are using. I hope we are agreeing on it, right? Because if I give you the microscope to everyone, everyone will be able to see the, all the millions of bacteria, correct? We will be on the same scale. So, let us take that as a metaphor. Ethics of an advocate. Uh, What's ethics or the or the duties? Let us put it, you know, ethics is a big, big word. Let us say do's and don'ts of the advocates, correct? Simple. Do's and don'ts, there is a prescription by the legislatures, by the creature of the legislatures. So the do's and don'ts of the advocates, let us take it as a tool. So one tool to everyone. Now, how does it help you? The truth with half of you having the microscope was different. When you contrast it with the other half who don't have that tool. But when you have the tools and if that tool gets into you, you know, when I say gets into you, it's, 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 uh, the program is the sensitization. It, it's not like, uh, you know, copy pasting thing. I give a dialogue, you read or understand by heart some part of it and you thereafter forget some other part not like that if something seeps into you goes into you and if that something happens to be a common then the divergence in the truth are likely to be less so therefore, I am not questioning because, you know, I would like to say that it is absolutely fine to have different moralities, different thought, divergence of opinion. It is absolutely fine when you say it's good, nice to have a good heart, extend because you know that was the only way to save that person. So he might have thought about the family, the client, something transcending his profession only alone. But the other, as you said, no, the morality was of the advocates different. So he could not have done it. Both are absolutely fine. But instead of uh, thinking individually, you can do some other thing. In the morning you go to court, right? Minus Saturday, Sunday. You wear dresses. Correct. How much of time you take? to decide what to wear, 5 minutes, 10 minutes maximum. Take the example of uh, you are going to a party, a celebrations, maybe a date too, right? How much time you will take to decide what to wear? Much more, correct? So, when you are using your subjective individual judgment, you are spending lot of energy of yours, right? I have to go to a birthday party, so my wearing has to be suiting to that. I am coming for a program in a judicial academy. I can't wear a t-shirt. I have to wear something for, I am saying about myself, right? So I have to wear something formal in nature. 
So no one is helping me. I have to decide. What color? Should I be wearing a red? No, it won't suit properly. So I am using my own morality judgment to decide, correct? Now, if I have a prescription, let us say that way, of do's and don'ts. Let us take an example of that assumption. The assumption was that subjectively two things are fine. Morally fine to save a person, but also morally not fine because of you can't take a cons you have to take a consent of the concerned advocate, correct? But instead of that, if you have a prescription specifically saying without the consent of the advocate on record, <coughs> you can't appear. Number one. Number two, if you appear, you may face a consequence. You know the consequence. Because very recently there has been many judgments on that. The consequence is you may lose your license. Your license may be suspended because it is a misconduct. Now come back to this assumption again and look at the with the better information. All I'm saying, if you have a prescription, that opens up your eyes and, and it helps you to think that yes, I'm feeling for the client, but because of the prescription, I might be facing a disciplinary proceedings because this is not permitted. And let, let us take an example, let us stretch it, you know, as, a, as, as an advocate, it's, we love to stretch. If I am suspended, I might even lose to appear from, say, say, 100 others for whose livelihood I can also save if I am a good advocate. So, therefore,